There she is! <laughs> hey everyone and welcome, I am Sailor Drew. Let's hang out and play some Witchwood. Okay, so we have to melt the lock to get into the church. It did give us like a new recipe. Let's see here, acidic, uh, ungent, corrodes anything except itself, thus explains the unconventional bottle. <laughs> okay, so we need a uh, weird water. Um, which is easy enough because I'm trying to keep like water and stuff like on hand just because we always seem to need it. Okay. The iron of the padlock wheezes and protests as it melts away into blackened goo. The chain falls away and you push open the gate to the churchyard beyond. Okay. Uh, into the church. Oh, there they are. Okay. Wow, lots of, lots of rats in here. Let's see here if there's anything of interest in here. Open-topped barrel. Decent for temporary storage. Not as much for retention. Okay, wow. Oh, I mean, I could capture, like, all these rats, I guess. You attempt to pick up the candlestick, but find it attached to some mechanism inside the altar. A latch flips open, and you watch a stack of boxes slide aside to reveal a hidden crack in the wall. Ooh, nice. Wow, a lot, a lot of more... A, a, a lot more rats. Ooh, look at all the treasure. Uh, okay, I guess this is our rat. Hey, who in blazes are you? Who let you in, huh? I let myself in. You should really hide your secret lair a bit better. But we must admit, this is quite the collection you've acquired here. Why? What's it to you? You looking to make a trade? We got whatever you need, sister. If you can pay the price, that is. As a matter of fact, I'm looking for an old antique brooch. Uh, oh, <laughs> and I heard you're the one to talk to. Yeah, we got plenty of brooches. Any of these beauties catch your eye? The vermin flips open his cloak and you see it's lined with rows and rows of jewelry. You lean in for a closer look. The items all look like priceless fa family heirlooms, but you can't pick out the one belonging to the Banshee. Hmm, I'm not sure. I'll need to confer with my friend as to which is the right one. The rat narrows his eyes suspiciously and hides his wares back inside his cloak. And just who is this friend of yours? Why, she's the original owner, of course. She would very much like her property returned to her. No deal, we don't make trades with the dead. But you're happy enough to steal from them? Let me just go tell my friend where your little hideout is. I'm sure she'll be more persuasive than myself. Fool, this place has sacred ground. No bad spirits can enter here. Now get out before we pick you clean. All right, all right. No need to be crass. Okay, so uh, return to the church altar. Oh, there's a chest here. No spirits may cross the threshold, eh? Well, then I'll just have to invite one in myself. You eye the flat surface of the barren altar. It looks like the perfect place to conduct a, a seance. Spear board recipe. Oh boy. Okay. Um. What do we need for this? Okay, so we need one of these jewels. Easy enough. I'm gonna have to get some dog hair soon because I am kind of running low on that. And then one of these to make the planchette, it looks like. And the hands of a believer allows communication with the dead. Okay. You close your eyes and place your hands on the planchette of the spirit board. Concentrating hard, you try to focus your thoughts towards the haunted mansion. Hello? Can you hear me? Show me a sign. The planchette begins to twitch and move, slowly tracing out letters on the board. Who is this oh come on now who else would it be i'm calling to let you know i found where the rat is you might want to come down here and speak to him the light 
lights flicker within the halls and dim down until you are drenched in total darkness. Only a blood red glow throbs from the altar. Wind rushes through the church, and you can hear the squealing of rats as they die for cover. On the gale come the screams of the dead reverberating through the halls. The spear board shudders and spits with noise, uh, splits, <laughs> and a skeletal hand claws its way out from the peephole of the cracked planchette. He is here. I can smell him. Ride through that crack in the wall, actually. The vengeful spirit howls and flies straight through your body as she sweeps down into the rat's hideout. Ugh, that's chilly. Wait for me. I need to see how this ends. All right, so let's follow her back down into the hideout. Ooh. You, you dare take from me? How did you? Wait. It was just a simple misunderstanding. I didn't... Even in your hour of judgment, you lie? The rat's bulging eyes lock onto you in desperation. This is your doing, isn't it? You let her in here. I'm merely helping to settle a dispute. You thought all your grave robbing wouldn't come with consequences? Makes justice for your crimes, thief. The dead have come for you. The banshee whirls around like a hurricane, drawing with her an innumerable host of ghosts and spirits. No! No, get off us! You wretches! You are dead! Finders keepers! Spectral claws grab onto the rat and his verminous minions and drag them squealing into the underworld. Ooh. That's one way to clean the place out. With a crack of thunder, the howling wind evaporates. Not a single rat remains. A calm falls over the banshee as she reaches down and picks up one of the scattered brooches left on the floor. My, my brooch, it's back. It's safe. I, I can finally sleep. She clutches her treasure into her breast and looks at you with a final crooked smile before fading away in a glimmer of ghostly smoke. In the eerie silence of the cave, you see something squirming in the debris. Oh, good. <laughs> oh my god, that gross. <laughs> you brush aside some pilfered treasure and uncover a writhing mass of pink rat tails tangling together like worms. Ugh. Looks like they all got knotted up trying to escape. The soul of the rat. Okay, so another chapter down and complete. Okay, so we're back at the docks, and now that we've gotten all of these bones from the graveyard, we should be able to make, like, a few of these. We are going to have to sit there and, like, catch some more crabs, uh, which some of them are kind of just, like, hanging out on the beach, and then others we actually have to, like, dig up, like, the little, uh, why aren't you going into the thing? Uh, yes, crab trap. That's exactly what we put down. Uh, okay. Apparently that crab trap is broken or I just put it somewhere like, there we go. Crab murder. That's, that's what we were looking for. But since we've got like three of these made, let's go ahead and see what happens. Aha. So these are, oh, she picked up, she's trying to pick up what I just like stole from her basically uh wow and she like dropped a lot of stuff uh-huh uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. okay so it kind of like keeps them distracted like if you've got that stuff on the ground so good to know good to know okay so i mean i think we got like a, a lot of shells just from like doing that twice what do we need for those tidal tincture uh, okay, so, I mean, I think we can make one of these and see what we get off of these guys really quick. Oh, whoops. Uh, so we need, what, one of these? Okay, now we should be able to make one. So I don't know what these guys, whoa, will drop. 
deep one added to inventory okay <laughs> interesting interesting all right uh seashells the nice seashells oh yeah i had 16. you hold out your collection of shells for the sailor to inspect ah fine booty excuse me <laughs> go on and take him into the captain he'll see you're fairly compensated for your services like uh, I, I i beg your pardon <laughs> Okay, so a lot more. Fishy villager. Fins were once were ears, and behind them gills. Something strange is afoot. So, walks like a sailor, talks like a sailor, but something's different here. Okay. So, something has happened to these people. A dapper fish sits behind a hoard of seashells, obsessing over each one like a jeweler. He grabs the nearest one and runs his finned fingers carefully over the shell's spine. Bringing the seashell to his lips, he blows a low trumpeting note. His bulbous eyes light up with hope as if waiting for something to happen. An uneventful moment passes and he tosses the disappointing shell aside. Arr, you useless piece of flotsam. He grabs the next shell on the next on the pile. This one, it's gotta be this one. Ahem, I'm looking for the captain of this ship. The fish's eyes swiveled at you suspiciously. Eh, uh, are you daft? Can't you see me, big hat? I am the captain. You don't look much like the father of that little red-headed girl on the docks. Oh, then you must be talking about my predecessor. Tragic, really. The fish shakes his head and blows sad bubbles from his pipe. He grabs a nearest shell and runs his fin fingers carefully over its spines. What happened? Poor bloke went overboard during a nasty typhoon. He tried to fish him out of the, uh, we tried to fish him out of the drink, but I'm afraid to say he is with old Davy Jones now. As his trusty first mate, I, it was my responsibility to take up his mantle. He adjusts his oversized hat with pride. Now, you best have something for me or else you wouldn't be wasting my time. You mean the seashells? The deckhand outside said you'd pay for them. Okay. The fish tears, uh, tears the shells out of your hands with such force that you nearly lose your footing. He brings the first shell to his lips and blows so hard that specks of slime go flying everywhere. It makes a pathetic squealing whistle. The fish slumps back down his uh, down into his red fat chair, tossing aside the shell with sharp disdain. Curse rubbish! I'll never find it! Find what? If you're looking to pick up a musical instrument, you're sure going about it a funny way. Never mind you what, just bring me more seashells! He flicks an odd coin shaped object at your feet. Ah, sand dollar. Great, more garbage. <laughs> What's this? I just traded you a bunch of shells. It's the currency of the future. If you get in on the ground floor, you'll be richer than a stag prince when I'm in charge of things. So if you want to be set for life, just bring me some more seashells. Hmm, I think I'll manage my own investments, thank you. A shame I'll have to break the bad news to the child about her father. Okay. So... Fishy upon fishy upon fishy. Okay, so if this is locked, can we use this key? Uh, whoops, inventory. Or... Oh, sweet. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Nice, okay, we cleared him out. <laughs> okay, so I'll actually be able to go down to the well at some point and go open up that one lock that's down there. Since, um... That one lock chest has been down there forever, and I haven't really done anything to it because uh, I could never figure out how to get it open. Did you get inside the boat? Have you seen my da? I'm afraid to inform you that your father was lost at sea. What? That, that's impossible. He's the captain, and a captain's never abandoned his ship. Who told you that he was lost? Was it that slimy fish mate? Uh, a <laughs> fish mate. I mean, technically. <laughs> Was it that slimy first mate, the fish? As a matter of fact, it was. Why? Of course, that explains why everyone is collecting seashells. He's trying to find the conch. 
He's swindling everyone in town just so they'll help him find a conch shell? It's not just any conch. My dad used to tell a story of all those who'd listen. One night, during a terrible storm, a handsome young sailor fell overboard. As he sank down into the sea, a beautiful mermaid came to his rescue. She brought him back to the shore beneath a lighthouse. It was love at first sight, but alas, they couldn't be together. She had fins and he had feet. But they made a special promise. Whenever he missed her sweet voice, he'd stand under the lighthouse and blow an enchanted conch. No matter where she was, she'd hear the sound and come to see him. That way, they could be together, if only for a moment. Isn't that romantic? It's just a silly fairy tale, girl. But that gross fish believes it. I bet he thinks he can make a mermaid fall in love with him if he gets the conch. They both got fins, after all. And maybe my dad's still out there. Maybe he got rescued by a mermaid, just like in the story. Oh, please. You have to find the conch before the fish does. It might be the only way to find my dog. If the fish was ever, uh, has everyone in town combing the beach for this thing, what makes you think I'll have a better chance? Maybe they're all looking in the wrong place? The sailor in the story lived in a lighthouse, not on the beach. Okay, so lighthouse. Uh, so let's check our map. To kind of see uh so the, the market is up there okay and the lighthouse is like up that way uh let's let's spaghetti the the ocean here uh grab this fish put that down and fantastic okay uh the first few times like i felt so bad that like things would kind of explode uh into like uh, like, I don't know, <laughs> to bits and pieces, but now I'm like, excellent. <laughs> so I'm like, getting acclimated to like murder or something, like, I don't know. So here's the lighthouse. This old lighthouse has seen better days. Although it towers high above the pier, the paint has faded and the windows have crusted over with layers of salt. The door refuses to budge. Growths of barnacles and coral seem to have sealed it shut. You put your ear to the keyhole and hear the unmistakable roar of the ocean inside. With your face close to the door, you spot words carved into their weathered wood. Lengthy, babbling prose about love, loss, and the sea. Leg, what terrible poetry. But maybe, uh, mayhaps, it's some forlorn magic left here uh, by the old lighthouse keeper? Well, I don't have the time to go fishing for long lost keys. A good dose of love juice ought to open up any embittered heart. Okay. Oh, look, pink key, lead potion, ocean oil. <laughs> so let's see what we need. Okay, so we need one of these, the dried fruit, which we have. We need an oceanic oil and then we've got the rose. So oceanic oil, we've got everything that we need for that. So let's make this, and then the key, okay, perfect. So whatever, uh, whatever the nature of desire may be, this is the instrument of unlocking. Okay, I love it, it's adorable. The rusty lock makes a sound like a sloppy kiss as you turn the key inside. Bubbling and creaking, the aged metal hinges protest as years of grime dissolve away. The wooden door swings open to reveal a wall of emerald seawater. You can see fish swimming about inside, but not a drop crosses the threshold. Oh my, the entire lighthouse must be filled up like a bottle. You prod the salty aperture with your finger, sending ripples along the surface. Then as if you pulled a stopper from the tub, the water begins to drain. Slowly at first, but quickly building ferocious speed. The waves cascade around you. You catch notes of trumpeting sound of a trumpeting sound droning above the crashing swells. The music turns to a soft whisper as the last of the flood is sucked away, leaving the inside of the lighthouse damp and encrusted with stranded sea life. You bend down to emanate uh, examine and <laughs> emanate the source of the drainage. A golden conch cell, shell is wedged between the waterlogged floorboards. Okay, take the conch. You put the conch to your ear. It sounds as if the entire ocean is contained within it. Ah, what a marvel. I wonder if the mermaids will still answer his call after all this time. 
The child, sorry, said to blow it out over the water under the lighthouse. Okay. We, which we, we will do. Standing at the end of the pier, you blow into the conch. You feel a warm breeze pass through the salty waves and uplift your spirits. A crystal clear trumpeting noise rings out from the shell and seems to still the ocean waters as a, uh, to a mirror shine. Sweet laughter chimes like a bell in response and a shadowy shape approaches from the depths below. An enormous full-bodied figure breaches the stillness of the water, throwing her hair back joyfully and extending her arms out to the sun. She thrusts her body up onto an outcropping of rocks, splashing her long, thin tail in the waves. Aha! Oh, there she is! <laughs> As the mermaid speaks, her voice is operatic. My gift, my gift, lain silent for years, now sounds again, sad music for my ears. My lover long gone, but their memory so sweet. I thank you for the nostalgia. What would you entreat? I'm looking for a man lost to sea. He was the captain of that tall ship over there. He points to the high sails looming over the docks. I don't suppose you've had any dealings with him? This man I have seen, though his fate is unknown, placed on a plank overboard he was thrown. Downward he plunged, though not to the bottom. Now a great sea serpent swam up from the deep and got him. It was pushed overboard? That grubby fish told me he was lost in a storm. Did you see this? Uh, see where this leviathan got to? The lagoon by the shore holds a secret below. Send away the tides and the serpent will show. Keep that conch close, blow it, and I shall abide. I'll bring the strength of the sea to your side. With her strong fin, uh, uh, with her song finished, she blows you a wet kiss and starts preening her hair with a spiny seashell. Okay, so we gotta find a lagoon. All right, so the map showed us that somewhere down here. There's like another part of the map, so yeah, this looks to be looks to be the place, all right. Oh, another portal. This must be the place to blow the candle. Uh or the conch? Did she say candle or conch? I'm just kind of looking around and not paying attention. Okay. Let's snag all this. Uh a bunch of barnacles. The conch. Okay, yeah. The candle. <laughs> Not even close. You take a deep breath and press the conch to your lips. It's Claritin, uh, Claron Call. Claritin. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I have allergies. <laughs> call echoes across the rippling tide. You feel the waves swell around your feet, reverberating with the sound of the conch. The water disappears so fast that you're unsure if the tides are receding into the ocean or if the seafloor itself is rising from the depths. When the waters recede, you look across the island to a yawning cave opening from within. You sense the steady rhythm of enormous breaths. Hello? Oh, there's a crab. Let's uh, snag that. Okay, investigate the lagoon depths. Aha. So it did kind of like open up like more places to explore. Oh, wow. Big time. Oh, there's one in the, another one of those weird fish. Okay. Lion weight. Yes, yes. So they're just basically like the, like, kind of like the equivalent of birds, I guess. I don't really see a point in, like, getting more of them, though. I mean, they do drop the scales, and I'm not really sure how many that I'll need. However, like, I really need, like, the little fish that I get from, like, fishing up with, like, the bubbly areas. More than the scales, I would imagine. Okay, hello? Anyone in here? Whoa, that is a big tail. What? What? Is it like wrapped around or something? Like that's the end and this is the beginning. <laughs> uh, whirlpool to the surface, return to the light, the breeze, the normal. Ancient one, something very, very old. 
Hello? Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Sea Serpent, you can't help but shudder under the powerful gaze of the monstrosity before you. A booming voice, sound, uh, voice sounds throughout the cavern, as if you were the very throat of the beast. Who dares enter my sanctum? I, I have come looking for a man lost at sea. The coils of the serpent shudder and wheeze. You brace yourself as the creature reels back and unleashes a cough loud enough to shatter a mountain. Excuse you. Have you caught ill, Master Serpent? You landlockers are all alike. Forever throwing your weapons into my wires. I have been poisoned by your insufferable arthritis. My stomach aches. My insides burn. What's the matter? Did you swallow something you shouldn't have? I have swallowed many things. You should not be here, my creature. Now, now, you're not well, and I may be able to help you. Open up that gob of yours and let me take a look inside. Perhaps you have come to strike the final blow against me. Why should I trust you? You're being dramatic. I'm not going to hurt you, but if you don't let me take a look inside your belly, this sickness will surely fester. Doubtful, but perhaps I can humor you if you prove that you are a friend to the ocean. And to me, these whales three, only then will I trust your words, land walker. Okay. The first of my many questions. You pull my waters from the ground to quench your thirst. No matter if you sit atop the well in your forest. Uh, oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Uh, I think it's a dragon? Another question. You may bury your dead in the earth, but there is no escape from the calm of the deep. Whose watery gaze watches over your graveyard? Oh jeez. Uh, mermaid? The final question. Do land walkers desire gold over all things? But in front of your vacant house, what creature rules with true happiness? Uh oh god. Uh I'm gonna say a whale. I have no idea. Ah! Dang it! <laughs> you have answered incorrectly. Wait, wait, let me try again. My memory isn't the steel trap it used to be. Okay, crud. So now we gotta go to all these places and take a look. Like, I think the mermaid and the well were correct. Uh, oh wait, there's like a portal. Like, literally a portal over here. <laughs> so I guess uh, I'll go take a look around and see what is in each of these places. I don't even remember where the bank is at, even if I have seen the bank. I think that the market is like up here or something. So, um, maybe it's up here. Like we haven't been to the market and that might actually be where the cat is at. That's the only character that we haven't ran across yet. So let's take a gander. Uh, hello? Oh look, it's a donkey. Oh, <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> I was gonna say, it looks like they're playing rock, paper, scissors or something. This uh, legitimately does look like a market. Like, this place is quite huge. But guys, that's gonna be it for this episode. I hope that you're enjoying this series so far. I'm gonna try and get the episodes out much further. Um, Typically what I try and do is I try and rotate out episodes between series, but I think what will just help me kind of knock things out faster and not like let life interrupt like me posting is just maybe concentrate on one at a time for the foreseeable time. So Eastward and everything else is kind of like on hold until we get this done. Um, I think we're kind of close-ish to the end because uh, we've already got like one soul down, but we've got a, a few more to go. But until next time, take care and I'll see you in the next video.